G'day, how you going? I'm going to try a painting, but it's a bad thing to do a painting when you don't know what you're going to paint. But I've set myself up in my little room here and I'm going to do a painting. I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is I want some sort of a moon, sky, water reflection, tree silhouette, something like that. So first I'm going to climb up the board in some white or wet. I'm using acrylic, so I'm going to spray my canvas with water. I've got some base white with retarder in it to keep it wet because I want to do a sky that's marbly and wishy washy, you know. Put a bit of water in there. That noise is my china plate on the floor. Okay, I've primed the board up. Now I've got some ultramarine blue with some retarder in it. I'm using the same brush. I didn't even wash it. Get a bit of a sky going. So I'm going to marble the sky like that. Put that brush down and grab another brush and just blend this colour into the white. It's going to give the sky a bit of a marbly depth look. Let me blend that and we'll get back to you. Okay, that's that ultramarine blue blended in, okay, just with the white poking through it. Now, I'm going to wash that brush out a little bit. And then I'm going to get some, put some dark colours in. I've got a bucket with a board in there, I flat my brush in it. Now I want to get some darker paint, which is, what colour was that one called? Ah, purple I think. And just put some darky bits in here. Grab your other brush again, a clean brush, and blend this dark colour into the sky. It'll give it that sort of moonlit night depth. I haven't painted for a while. I've been busy building a little house out the backyard for my sons. But um, I want to get back into some sort of painting. So we blend all this darker in. As you can see, there's no real definite clouds in there yet. See, my paint with that retarder and it's still wet. I can blend it. I've got a bit of ultramarine blue just to mix it up to get some different depths of blue in there. I'm just going to wipe the brush on a rag and blend those little bits of other blue in there just like so. Might not pick it up on the camera but looking at the painting in real life you see all these different textures of blue and what's going to sit this sky down is when I do some clouds over it, sink them into that as well. Just makes everything come together for your painting. Now I'm going to get some good quality white on my fan brush and do some, I'm going to have my moon roughly there so I can probably have some, I'm just twisting this around like so. Wipe the brush, add more paint. It's a bit of dark corner there, so putting a bit of a light cloud over that corner. Would marry the darks and lights together. That's all I've done. 
Now I'll blend that. Okay, blend that. I'm going to leave the top markings there and blend it down into the bottom and the bottom into the sky. And sometimes when it looks too uniform, I like to wish it up like that. I don't know how it's looking on the camera, but it's, it's just a little bit here that needs a bit more sharp or white in it, right about here somewhere. There we go, simple. Leave that into there. Now I'm going to blow dry this bean acrylic so I can add me moon and then put some other clouds in front of the moon because the moon is behind clouds normally, not in front, so I'll dry this. Okay, I've finished drying it. I'll just show it a bit closer. There's our chopped up sky, so to speak, okay? It's got depth and it's gonna have water down here. Now I've just got a compass and a pencil in there to create the circle of my moon. Roughly diagonalise your corners and where your lines would roughly meet, roughly the centre. And I'm going to, you might not see it on the camera, but I can see this line here that I'm doing. About there, from about 6 o'clock all the way up to about 9 o'clock. Okay. If you look carefully, there's the pencil line from 6 o'clock going all the way around here. Okay, I've got lots of bits of masking tape torn off here. And I'm just gonna go around that circle I drew on there, getting a round circle. There are other ways you can do it. Not everyone has a big piece of paper. You can cut the circle out of the paper I've done before, put that over it and sponge your moon in. But I'm just doing it this way for now. And the good thing about acrylics, I was able to blow dry all that paint, so that paint can be a workable surface. Alright, as you can see, I've masked up my 6 o'clock round to 9 o'clock with the masking tape. This line here is my imaginary horizon line. So what I want to do is sponge my white on, dark to thin, and then get that the way I want it because I'm using acrylic. So when I do this bit, I'm going to quickly move that tape and drag it down in the so-called reflection of the water. Okay, get my kitchen sponge, load him up with some white. I've dampened, my sponge was dry, so I've dampened it just a bit, so everything's sort of blendable. There's my imaginary line there, you probably can't. Now I'm going to stamp this on. I want to have a bit of a point over here, just there, because my moon's going to fade. And see, I'm going to sort of blend him like this just to my imaginary line there and then stamp it don't think, don't be too particular I'll go a little bit more just because I want to see I'm just moving a sponge in a random old way Now I'm going to add a little bit of that purpley colour to give the moon some bits of, I don't know what are you, there's that purple. Then now I'm going to go to black. some black on there and then just we want to keep the yeah, I'll put the black there and then I'll get the other end of the sponge and sponge it in just so it looks like it's been airbrushed Sponge is dirty, so I'm going to have to clean. 
cleaning. Okay, now I'm going to do that bottom bit of the moon where I've got to quickly pull it off and reflect it. So we'll just put a blob there like so. Okay, we'll get this tape off. Then I'm going to grab my fan brush which is lightly damp and get this across the water somehow. Start the book. Now I want to do some clouds in front of this moon to set the moon back in the sky. I'll get my good quality white again, just some choppy clouds, and then we'll see how we go. Because I'm going to have mountains there as well, so just. Now I'm going to dry that so I can do some more. Now what I'm doing, now I've put the moon on, see how some of these clouds have gone behind it again. What I've done, I've put some paint on my brush, white paint, just very lightly and then I can just put that in front of the moon again and blend it out just so it sort of sinks that moon back. I'm going to do that anyway. Alright, we'll put the horizon line in now. So, this is the distant mountain. Just any other way. I've brushed some retarder on this dry bit. So, once I've done my horizon mountain line, I can smudge it down into the water's reflection. Okay, we're going to do the second row of mountains now, which is a bit darker. up top like this and then I'll get my pull down brush so now I'm going to 
pull this down. Hang on, I've got to find my line and start from my line. Get all this into the water. See, if I hadn't have put that retarder in this bottom bit, it'll be all dry and just not working for me. Now, before I do anything else, we've got to get our moon's reflection back in, so which is the pull down brush again. Oh, that's the side I pulled the mountain down so I'm going to use that side now to pull the reflection down as well. Okay and then we'll dry the brush a bit and then just lightly pull him across to give it a wet Blurry look. So we're getting there. Now I've got to get me reflections in there. For those of you who are too scared to use a knife and get it wrong, I use me little beauty brush. Now where is it? This works well for me and if you enjoy painting, it'll work well for you. Get your nice quality white on there but a little bit watered down so she'll flow and then we'll Oh, one moment, I've got to dry that first. I'll just dry it a little bit because I need some of this to flow. Alright. I'll get it chiselled on the edge of my brush. And we're going to put a horizon line in front of all this. Because this is the end of the water. This is going to have other stuff in it, okay? We can just, this puts the surface on top of the water, so any of those reflections that we blurred in there, it kind of sinks and sits them down into the water. Alright, I'll come back to you when I do that. Now what I do now, so as they're not so obvious and blobbed on there, I'll get me fan brush and I'm just going to because that's still wet with the retarder, I'm just going to blend, like you're blending the clouds, but you're blending the surface of the water. See, I'll get a bit more water to chisel the edge of the brush. And then I'm blending that to the surface of the water. I'll show you closely when I've done all this, but you get an idea what I'm doing. And it allows you to work at longer sweeps to keep the water level. Because if everything's level and in perspective, People start asking you, where'd you take that photo? <laughs> anyway. And sometimes bits of the crook of the water can help drag it into a straighter line. But you can see how that's sort of, given the water, not so obvious. Now I'm just going to highlight some white here. <clears throat> okay, that's the water and the moon and everything done. Now I'll just put some foreground front in front of this. Uh, I've just got my little beauty brush and just sharpened up the edge of that white, just used white and put a white sharp edge on it because it just wasn't looking quite right before. Now we'll just do some foreground in front of that left hand side there. I'll use a dark purple and I'm just going to mash this in front here. So, if I didn't dry underneath, that'll be marbling and turning into mud.
some of the blacks to create depth. Don't kill your blacks. This is just like a gap filler for the corner of the painting. See what's happening there? Now just to keep it simple, we're just going to finish this off with a tree. I'm just using a simple black. You can mix it up and get browns or whatever you want in there. But I'm just going to try and get a tree over here, twisting it in front of this moon, keeping the paint nice and thin so it doesn't feather the edges and twist it as you go. So I'm going to get a tree coming up here, okay? You're with your branches, you don't have to, you can have some coming up, I don't know if you could see there, but come up and you can cross over. Bring some down. This how I've crossed them over. Okay, done the tree. I'm happy. You can keep going on and on with your trees, but I'm just going to put a bit of highlight into this tree now to bring it out of the background. I'll just get all these highlights on there. I'm just working from the... You can keep them on the left side of the painting on the top and left so it sort of gives you some dimension of a branch that's behind one and like here this trunk is in front of that bending over branch One more other thing that I might do is just put some reeds here, some tall grass coming out of there. I didn't know how to paint about two years ago and I was keen to do it. I went on YouTube, discovered that people teach you how to paint. I'm not teaching you how to paint, I'm just showing you how I paint and if you like the style you can adopt it. But I started watching Wilson Bickford and he's got a good way of just making things easy and learn. See like these bits of grass here and after you do a few paintings you realise you have your own signature style of painting you end up doing the same sort of thing. Not meaning to but you do. Just a bit of gap filler this is. When you've got time to sit down and do it properly, you can get a better job. Okay, I'll put a wee bit of highlights on some of this somewhere. One or two thick blobbing. I've got to get some... I'm just going to sort of... just to break it out of the other colours there. But anyway, just to finish
finish it. I've got some raw sienna, yellow oxide and some white. I've just got that dark colour blobbed in a bit of a rock. I'll get the next darker colour, put it on my knife somehow and just do that. And then get the next lighter one and just sort of do the same again. And then a bit of the white just to slightly highlight that rock. And if you want, get a bit more of that. Just around the edge of it. And one thing I always do with my rocks, once I've done all that scraping with the, I get the black and I might just, it's gonna be hard to show you here. I just try and detail, and I'll do them and then I'll show you. It's like putting the branches on a tree. Let's see, I'll put these black lines in there, just with my liner brush. Just gives it that little bit more detail, a bit more pride in your work. Anyway, that'll be it. I'm gonna sign that and that's roughly finished. So I hope you like the idea of doing something simple. Alrighty, that's it, it's all done. Hope you like my video. I've signed it, and that's what we got anyway. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.